Last class, we have seen um, installation of package and we have a service I am on CentOS machine. And we installed HTTPD service, yum install HTTPD. <clears throat> and the same package in Ubuntu machine is so like vagrant user now. So I can run a sudo apt install. Apache 2. So Apache 2 is the same package name, Apache HTTPD service. We, in Ubuntu, we call it as Apache 2. In centers, we call it as HTTPD. We, as in that's the package name. But they both does the same work. They are the same software, actually. And they are a service. Okay, a service is a computer program is a process that runs in the background and serves the user a request serves a client request so when you talk about httpd and apache 2 its client is a browser so from the browser you can access this service you can use this service or utilize this service a website basically in a very very common language you can host a website with httpd and apache 2 it's a service and a computer is called as a server when it runs a service which serves a client request on the network on a particular port port number will be network port number we'll talk about a basic of networking tomorrow that time we'll talk about that so apache 2 in ubuntu or httpd in centers will run some processes to manage those processes to or to manage that service we have the service command service apache2 status so that's the command you check the status of the service service the name of the service and its status and here it shows it's running so let's come to first centers machine now we have HTTPD service installed. Now let's check its service, service HTTPD status. So it says stopped. If you want to start it, you just say start. So with service command, there will be few options. Start, stop, restart, reload. So we can even restart. Restart will shut down the service, stop the service and then start the service. Okay, there's another option called as reload. So we use reload when you want to load the latest configuration. Whenever you make change to the configuration of any service, you restart the service. Okay, keep that in mind. When you make configuration change, when we make configuration change to a service restart service okay keep that in mind the other points are when we start a service we enable it yeah i know that's both sounds same but this is the difference so the service is started, HTTPD service is started. And I am on CentOS 6. In till CentOS 6, to start the, all the service, to manage all the service, we have service command. OK, I will show you about the latest generation command also. To enable the service, we have the command CSK config. Give the service name and say on. Now what this will do is, when I reboot this machine, then the HTTPD service will come off while booting. But if I say off, then while booting, HTTP service won't come up. So enable means boot, start at the boot time. Everyone clear on this? Enable means start at boot time. 
Yes. All good. Any question? Okay. So whenever you start a service, enable it. When you stop a service, disable it. Service IP tables status. This is a okay. It's not running. Good. Anyways, IP tables is a firewall service in CentOS. Okay. Okay, there is no configuration specified seems so if for some reason we are stopping the firewall so we would also like to disable it so also when we stop a service we disable it. So don't let me tell this again later. When I say start the service, that means start and enable both. Okay. When I say stop a service, that means stop and disable both. This is very for, uh, important for us when we'd be talking about images and all, containers and all. Starting, enabling, stopping, disabling is very important. And whenever you make any configuration change to a service, restart that service. The other option is that you can also reload. Reload will not stop and start, will just load the latest configuration. But reload option is not available for all the services. And sometimes reload doesn't work. So always the better option is restarting the service. Okay. Now. Let's move to the processes. <clears throat> so there's not much given about processes in the books because oh no, uh, sorry. So till uh, CentOS six and Ubuntu fifteen. So till center six and till Ubuntu 15. The command is service, service name, and then start, stop, restart. Okay. So this is the command example service HTTPD start. Okay, but after CentOS 6, so when I say CentOS 6, I'll better give here as EL6. EL means Enterprise Linux. CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, all Enterprise Linux. Okay, or after Ubuntu 16, the command is, you can say after or from, from and after. system ctl and the option start slash status slash restart and the service name okay that's the command example system ctl start HTTP T. Okay, I'll show you example. Uh, we have Ubuntu 16 here. Ubuntu unless we release underscore. So that's Ubuntu 16. Okay. So as I told you, after Ubuntu. 16 from and after Ubuntu 16, the command is system CTL status Apache 2. Now, don't get surprised when service command works over here. Okay, service command also works in the latest operating system, but it's again redirects to this command open. Okay, from to stop it, system CTL stop Apache 2.
dead. Again started. So it's capturing my session whenever I'm saying when I'm saying status command it's capturing my session. You just give Q to cancel that. You see, just give Q. Okay. Okay, so that was about sir, uh, service start and stop, and now the enable command. So for sent for EL6, instead of this, I'll take it separately. Enable or disable service. So again, till here we have command for EL6 CHK config service name and on or off. For Ubuntu, it's different command update hyphen rc dot d service name enable or disable okay that's to enable disable service in el6 or till ubuntu 15 but with latest generation after el6 and after ubuntu 16 System CTL enable service name for both. Okay, for center six and Ubuntu 14 for both system CTL to enable. Okay, no different command. So let me show you one example here. System CTL enable Apache 2. That's how you enable. So if you want to check whether it's enabled, you say is hyphen enable enabled. What? Executing is enabled Apache to enable. Yeah, okay. It's showing enabled. Is enabled showing enabled. Okay. Or if you want to see whether the service is just running or not and don't want to check in detail you can just say is active it will show you the service whether it's active or not so that means running this means enabled at the boot time okay now system ctl has a lot of other options that can manage your system uh, but these are few so to manage the latest generation services in the latest generation operating system we have system ctl all time we have service command chk config update uh, update rc different different command but now system ctl across the board all the new generation operating system we use system ctl okay all clear how do you find out what operating system you are in you name minus r okay you name Minus R. Etc. Etc. Cat slash etc slash red hat underscore red hat underscore release. I, yeah. Then or else ls ls lsb. Okay. Okay. Now. All right. You name right. will try. This is right thing, huh? Cat red hat release. So this will at least make you you know sure that this is no red hat based operating system. That this is not centers, this is not Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it could be Debian. So we will try then LSB underscore release hyphen A. Okay, find out your operating system name and its version, and based on that, you will have the right command. Now, you have caught up the DevOps training in a time when the world is transitioning most of the places from uh, six. To seven, he sent us red RHL six to seven from Ubuntu 15 to 16, 18, like that. So you will definitely witness 
different operating system older generation also new generation also so be prepared these are the commands there will be few more differences that i'll tell you later okay or if you want you can simply google saying you know difference between different commands between centers six and centers seven there will be cheat sheets and list and all okay but well, whenever there is a time i'll tell you the difference all good okay muting you all fine <clears throat> so we are going to wrap up uh, linux today all right like whatever we have covered in the quick start like we have linux almost every day in the course but the basics ones and all of that little bits of server management that will wrap up today so that's how you manage service and there are different kinds of services like for example mysql service so we have a project exercise probably day after tomorrow where uh, will set up the entire project on our virtual machines or we profile project manually so all the services i'll explain you and then we're going to set them all one by one there are how many six to seven services that we have to set up in different different vms and connect them together okay it's going to be a very good exercise all right a very good warm up before we begin our devops main exercise you know warm ups right you do exercises Okay. Um, yeah. A top command. A top command in Linux system will show all the active task, all the processes you can see. Okay. Uh, top command has so many uh, information that's flowing around. Up time, 26 minutes. So it's up from 26 minutes. What happened? What? Where did it go? Did I close it accidentally? Strange. Anyways, Ubuntu system. So uptime 25 minutes. One user is connected. Load average is 0, 0.00. So load average is going to be the CPU wait time. Uh, so we have three values in load average. This is current load average. The second one is last five minutes average. And the, uh, this one is last 15 minutes average. Okay, this is interview question, all right? Hey, what's happening? Oh, that is also gone now. But they don't like top command or what? So current load average, last five minutes, last 15 minutes. Load average, you can also find with W command, which will tell you uptime of the system, how many users are connected, W command, okay? Or also uptime command is there. There also you can find the load average and how many users are there connected. So it's showing two user. You know why two user? Because my first session got closed, but the user was still active there. So it's going to take some time for that session to die. Just a moment. Yeah, all right sorry okay so let's be back to the top command <clears throat> so there are total one not task running which you can call as processes uh i can't say running actually they are there in the memory so out of one not six one is running or one or two are running and one not four are sleeping that many processes are sleeping 
in linux most of the processes will be sleeping until unless they don't get signal to execute some tasks okay until unless they don't process some signal so they don't get the signal they'll be sleeping that's how linux manages memory better okay not all of the processes will be running the process which is doing some computation only will be running most of them will be sleeping and this sleep will not be like the sleep that we think like how we sleep okay this is going to be a very this is called as interrupted sleep okay will, the process will get quickly up and running stopped zero process are stopped zero or zombie i'll explain you about zombie and stop process that's cpu utilization how much cpu is currently under utilization okay this and this are different value okay this is cpu utilization cpu utilization can go 100% also okay then it comes down also like the load average uh, sorry no in the in windows we have this task manager right that one similar to that right so you see cpu utilization that goes till 62% 100% also same in linux system also okay and by the way that scrutil is a go to meeting not virus right and then ram memory it's in kb how much is used how much is free swap swap is a uh, virtual memory on your hard disk so if any process is sleeping and the ram needs to be freed there is not enough memory in the ram so sleeping processes will be moved to swap okay keep that in mind sleeping processes will be moved to the swap active processes will never be moved to swap active process will be always in the memory okay process that are running and these are those processes that we are talking about I distorted it let's run it again <clears throat> so th these are all the users this this is the user that is running the process the first column talks about the process id every process will have an id okay that's how it is identified on the system if the process is killed and started it may get another process id also okay so these are some values nice value and all which will make sure how much resource they get load average is the uh, cpu wait time actually how long the cpu is waiting to process something that's a load average there's much more calculation in that but load is all about cpu load average okay mostly about cpu but even if your memory goes full then the uh, then cpu also then load also increases on the cpu okay but load average is all about cpu okay here is the percent of cpu utilization i just explained you ta for current load average last 5 minutes load average last 15 minutes load average got it okay <clears throat> so percent of cpu utilization percent of memory for the process time and the command the actual command you see this Mm, some familiar process. Okay, now keep this one in mind. This will be helpful later also. In it is the first process in Linux. Okay, its PID process ID will be one. So this is the grandparent of all the process. This starts all the other processes. Okay. in it let's write it in capital to give it more value in it process okay but with the later latest generation operating system we also have system d as the first process okay and same pid is 1 like so enterprise linux 7 and rhl7 and all we are having now system d as the first process its pid is always one okay this is the first process grandparents of all the process when you want to shut down your system the it it's going to close close all the process at the end when the pid one dies your system dies in any case pid one is dead everything is dead okay now understanding about processes 
uh, for you is not really so much important for us uh, but it will make you really good with the good with your systems and when you're dealing with automation you'll be running so many things in the backgrounds so having that knowledge of processes how they run in the back background what are daemon and all those things will be always helpful for you so i am taking this for you so that was our top command okay and there are so many interview questions from the top commands you better read it again you know i'll send you some link also if you want about the top command in detail explanation so the uh, like uh, top command shows in detail uh, sorry uh, dynamic information you know it's just fluctuating uh, ps ox command will go will show you similar information but it's going to display and quit ps ox so the first process okay pid1 is in it all right that's the percent of cpu utilization keep that in mind pid1 in it and then there are stats okay s stats uh, s stands for sleeping r stands for running and then you have different kinds of sleeps uninterrupted sleep interrupted sleep actually so much in detail about the stats but let's show you if you r is running s is sleeping okay uh, then the other one you have is z zombie i'll explain you about zombie in a moment the processes that are in square bracket are called as kernel threads okay kernel processes never touch that process don't do anything with that okay these are the kernel processes right we don't do anything with it we just let it run the kernel manages all of that everything that is in square bracket okay then that's dh client dscp client okay that's a service that is that will ask for the ip address from the dscp server in the system port then you have some rc log d service sorry process that is going to manage the system's log and what is its interesting mingd this is your shell actually okay that we get you see your http process we have started the http process okay you see how many how many process of http is running we just say a service http start and then it will start processes in the background okay that's what running a service means the processes will be running this is a daemon 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 not daemon d a write it D A E M O N daemon, okay, and not daemon, okay. Daemon, it's a process running in background and will be detached from the shell. Okay, that's what daemon means. In uh red hat family daemons are named as d like ssh d http d mysql d they will be all d at the end but that's only in red hat family okay other uh, like ubuntu and any other debian systems we don't have a d at the end to represent as a daemon so ps ox gives really lot of information probably we are just in interested in the process id i just want to find the process id so ps hyphen ef is a good command just to find the process id like here httpd first it is started by root this is the process id 2963 okay and you have here two columns actually for the process ids one is the process id the other one is parent process id okay who started this process like pid1 who started this process p this is zero ppid yes there is a process zero also but that then that process dies okay it's the booting in it rd image file when it loads that's the process it loads everything it loads the kernel in it process start in it process takes the ownership and then the process id zero dies so you won't find a process id with zero over here okay but you can certainly see that 
that this process's pro parent process ID was zero. Then two, that's a kernel thread in square bracket. Then that started so many process, this third, fourth, fifth, all this process. You see a process from three to, I don't know, scroll, scroll, scroll. All of these kernel thread check in square bracket, okay? Yeah, 302, that is also started by kernel thread and that process is started by init. Right, till here 814. Okay, now other processes of so process number 1000 DACP client. Its parent process ID is init. Okay, check that out. Then 1236 halt. Then you have halt runner process. Its parent is this one. You can check here 1236. It's important for you to identify the parent process ID to understand about um, orphan processes. Okay, I'll explain you that. So now check here our HTTP servers. <clears throat> now we are not so much concerned about those processes. We are concerned about the processes that we are running, we are managing, and we need it to be running. Two nine six three is the parent process ID. Is is the process ID of HTTP process, which in turn started all these processes. Check the parent process ID, 2963, 2963,2963. So all this process is started by this process, which is called as a forking. Okay, process then starts other processes, then that processes can start other processes. That's called as forking, okay? So you need to identify that. Why you need to identify? You'll understand in a moment. <clears throat> so I just want to find HTTP process so I can say grep HTTP. Oh, sorry. Come on. See all the process that has the word as HTTP, we are filtering and showing it on the screen. Apart from this one at the end, this 3160 is a grep process. Now, grep process when we run the command, the grep process starts. When the grep, when the command execution completes, the grep process will be dead. So there is no point in seeing that. So we can do one more thing here. We can pipe it again with grep hyphen v. Grep hyphen v hyphen v will do the reverse. It will not show that particular line which we don't want. So I don't want to show wherever there is written grep. Like I don't want to show see this line. Okay, check that out. Okay, now one more thing. Pipe. Oc. Oc. Did we see Oc previously? I guess we've seen. Anyways. Oc is again a filter utility. Now I am just worried. I just want to see the processes. Okay, just the process ID. I don't want to see the other details. I know these are all now HTTP process, but I just want to print the process ID. That's all. So I'll say Oc in single quote in curly braces. Just type print and the field dollar one two. That's the second field, right? Just displaying the process ID now. Oops. Okay. And that's a very important command. It will be very helpful for you when you have to kill all the processes at once. Okay. Note it. Keep take a note of it. This will be very helpful. Now, some processes dies. Some processes don't die when you say service httpd stop sometimes the processes don't respond for some reason load good load is going high or you know deep process got defunct this could be so many reason why the process is not dying so we can kill the process by ourselves also by giving kill command kill and target the parent process like i want to kill httpd so i'll say ta kill 2963 Okay, when I say kill 2963, this is 
actually not a kill this is actually a request for uh, 2963 process to close its operation 2963 process or you can say it's an order also yes it's an order 2963 process receives the order we call it a signal and then 2963 process will find all its child process and will close all the child operation and then will close itself a very clean way of stopping a process let's check nothing httpd is service is down you can check service httpd status it's dead but subsist log i'll say start now okay now let's check the process again started okay but the process ids will be different so here there is no such scenario where you know process service command is not working service command is definitely working but you'll have a situation where service command will not work system ctl command will not work sometimes you don't have that command service and system ctl okay sometimes you need to write a script that will check the process ids and if it's there it's going to stop them so in this cases this command will be very helpful for you now sometimes kill doesn't work so i say kill 3208 and that also does not work the process is so stubborn it doesn't respond for anything or command is not passing signal is not going through for some reason so other option is hyphen 9 Okay, hyphen nine is a forceful. It's not asking. It's not even an order. It's just action. Okay, so again, without previous mindset, I am trying to kill the parent process. But when I do that, the parent process got killed. But parent process had no idea that it is gonna get uh, closed. So it did not close the child process. So child process will be still running. see that 3210 see all the child process are running and now who is the parent who is the pa what is the parent process id come on what's the parent process id now in it very good so it's adopted by in it process id 1 okay not root who said root shekh rahim not root i said in it PID one init process. Do not forget that. Okay, so it is adopted by init process. These kind of processes are called as orphan process. Okay, orphan process is a process you have seen that in action actually. Let me just now tell you in a theoretical way. Okay, orphan process is a process whose parents process are dead. but it is still operational it's still running but here is the bad thing if the parent process is dead then child processes the orphan processes is not going to uh, serve any purpose to us for the user okay because it receives all the signals from the parent process the parent is dead it doesn't know what to do really so orphan process will be in the memory and uh, will not uh, you know will not be of any help okay so it's always good idea to uh, clean the orphan process all right in such cases you can kill them one by one you can say kill hyphen 9 right i can do like this kill hyphen 9 i can say 3210 3211 uh, no i can just start typing all the process but some but sometimes there are hundreds of processes okay in such cases your common sense will come to help you if you know all those command you have to just put all them together grep hyphen v and then awk i just want the process id which is in the second column print dollar 2 mm -hmm. try grep wait Oops. What? Grab hyphen V. Oh, grab hyphen V. Grab like this. Okay, sir. Yeah. 
so you have to exclude anything that is unnecessary okay so i want to exclude that from the search i don't want that process id to be killed I mean, even if it's get killed it's already dead the grep process so awk print dollar two right so anyways you got the process id you think you know i can just now do copy pasting you don't need okay there's one more thing you can do pipe it again with x arcs x arc okay and say kill hyphen nine so what x arcs will do whatever is you no know, whatever output is coming from here comes as an input xrx will execute that command and take that input so kill hyphen 9 and all the processes all dead at once see that no 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 service are doesn't de depend on anything it's all the parts and everything is exported Path is only for absolute retrieve path is only for your files, okay, not for processes. All right, I've given you a very helpful command. It can be done with other ways also. So this command is find the process ID and kill it. Okay, find all the process ID with HTTPD. Okay, and then kill it. All right, take a note of this one. Also very helpful. And you should be pleased. These are the tricks that we use in system administration. Okay, all good. You understood how to find the process ID and kill it. You should know that. And what's an orphan process you understood? Parent process is dead, but the child process is still running. Now let's talk about the zombie process. Zombie process are very easy to identify because you can just see them in like top command how many zombie process are there okay and then you can check in ps ox command okay there will be z here okay in the stack there is no zombie process for us now so you won't see any process with the z stack so it's very easy to identify okay i hope you know what's zombie you know what zombie you watch movies hollywood movies or even Bollywood, it's coming now nowadays. <clears throat> you don't watch movies, okay? Seriously, Living Dead, yeah. Finally, someone knows it. Uh, so zombie, like if you don't know what's a zombie, you can just simply Google and find out what's a zombie. Uh, but here it is person who is dead right but still walks still somehow th there is no soul soul is missing okay it's not really uh, doing a human thing okay but it's still walking running and even eating and god knows what it eats <laughs> okay so undead they also call it as undead okay which is dead but not dead like that so process zombie process are exactly same okay process which is dead but its entry is still there in the process table. Okay. Hmm. Very simple meaning I tell you. Okay. So a process which is dead, but its entry is still there in the process table. Like a person is dead, but they are still on uh probably walking on the earth. So <laughs> the still entry is there on the earth. Okay, but they are of no use. Like that zombie process are of no use. But the zombie process that is in our system are not so much harmful as they show it in the movies. It's not going to do anything to us. Zombie process doesn't take resources. Okay. It doesn't take any resource. The only problem you'll get when you have zombie processes, you know, uh, starting or stopping or uh, reloading a similar process, similar service that has the same name. Okay. That time you may have some problems, but otherwise zombie process doesn't create much issues to us and zombie process cannot be killed. Okay, you can't just say kill and give the process ID of zombie and kill it. Okay, because if it's already dead, how you can kill it? So there are some ways to clean the zombie process. The best way is to reboot your system. 
that's how you can clean the process table entry and you won't see any zombie process okay orphan process you have to identify find it based on its parent if its parent is missing it's adopted by init you know http service will never be started by init why will it be started by init so if it is its parent process that is in it that means it's an orphan process so you better clean that zombie process clearly shows it's a z okay so that was about orphan process and zombie process interview question by the way you have seen that in real time how it is okay then theoretically answer that right so much today all good so that's what i wanted to show you about processes and all now let's see one final thing Oh, there are so many stacks in a service uh, in sleep okay uh, interrupted sleep uninterrupted sleep okay so many ss is an active sleep i guess i'll send you uh, one link where you can go through all of that there are like, so many different types of stacks okay uh, now let's talk about um, archiving okay is that http so archive and zip archive and compress all right archive means like zipping compress means reducing its size so you need to do this operations also almost regularly when you want to move some data some directory set of files from one system to other system we archive it compress it and then we send it over the network by using scp and all command or our sit command or if some log file is taking too much of disk space log files generally we have some log rotation policies that will clean the old logs okay logs gets continuously updated log files and they gets you know uh, uh, their size gets in gbs and gbs and they keep on increasing so it's uh, always necessary that we do the log rotation log rotation means delete a log file that is so and so old okay so eight days old or that mean days old but before you delete we have to take its backup because maybe we have uh, a audit okay that needs uh, six months old logs so you don't want to delete the log we probably will take its backup put it somewhere else and then we take its backup uh, sorry then we delete it okay before we delete we take the backup so a very basic thing about backup is you archive the data and compress the data and then you can store it at a different location so there is a directory called httpd and let's say its size is increasing okay its log file size is increasing and i want to archive it compress it and move it somewhere else so we have utility tar okay tar is an archive and compress utility you see tar hyphen c it will compress a directory uh with uh, sorry create a directory c is for create an archive like just zipping right click and zip the directory like that but you also want to compress it so you can give option like z okay and uh, if you want to print lot of output you say v all right and f is for the file you give first the destination so i'll say httpd underscore i will give the date okay today's date that is 02 01 2018 i am just kidding i know it's 2019 okay and then at the at the end extension you say tar dot gz not a mandatory extension but it's always good to identify if you know if you see a file with tar.gz extension that means it was created by tarball and then it was also compressed by z operation a z option so that's the name now give the target that you want to compress httpd directory or i can give the complete path here you know like var log but you know always go into the directory what you want to backup and then give its path relative path 
because there is this forward slash at the beginning that can create issues later. So tarball, this is called a tarball. Tarball means an archive or compressed file created by tar command. That's called a tarball. So that's a tarball now. And now I'm going to move that tarball to let's say somewhere, some shared directory, some different place where it goes to a different storage. Okay, moved like that. Let's go to temp directory. To unzip that, tar hyphen. Now, by looking at the extension of a tar wall, you can add in, you can uh, tell what options you have to provide. You know, X is for extract. So X option Z because it is showing option option as GZ. Okay. V F give the log file. I give the zip file path. See archived. Unarchived, sorry. If you want to unarchive it to a different location, you can say hyphen capital C and you can give the path. Let's say I want to send it to probably opt. Let's send it to opt. So now you see that in the opt directory. You see, it's unarchived in the opt directory. You have like extract here, extract somewhere else like that. Okay. All right, let's go back. Let's see one more command. Zip. Zip will be sometimes installed, sometimes will not be installed. Let's try that. Zip httpd underscore 0201 2019. Yeah, it's going to take some practice to type 2019 dot zip i just give the extension dot zip and httpd so in zip and archive command also like that okay first you give the destination and then you give the source okay if the zip command is not installed install it okay you can install it yum install zip and it will be installed or if it's a ubuntu system app to install zip okay zip command will not be by default available on on this on all the server okay and then I can move it. OK, now check, you know, with the extension, now I can identify that this is done by zip. This is done by tar.gz, OK? Done by tar and hyphen z option. So if you actually see hyphen zip, I can use unzip command. And you can give the path. Okay, yeah. so when you're going to uh, unarchive with unzip command and if these files already exist, then it will ask you question. What do you want to do? Do you want to overwrite this or not? Okay, if you want to overwrite, you can just say hyphen A, which will overwrite all. But tar command will not give you this, okay? Tar command will simply unzip, doesn't matter. You see, it will not ask you. Unzip command will ask you at least have a courtesy to asking where should I overwrite or not, okay? But tar command comes with a lot of options. Tar command uh, is the legacy archive tool, okay? Backup archive tool and it has, it's a native Linux tool. It comes with all the Linux flavor and it has tons of options. You know, you can even check uh, what's the content of a zip file by giving T, TVF show you what is the content okay you can even add an extra file like that also you can do and there are so many options tar is more powerful than zip zip is just very easy okay quickly get things done zip and move that's all oh you don't need to be mandatory in the route to install packages as i told you you can issue the sudo command also like now i am vagrant user i can say sudo yum search yum or let's just install something yum install kit but you have to give at least the sudo okay without that it's gonna throw an error 
Got it? VJ. VJ. I like your name, man. It's cool, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's wrong with you? Just go. Okay, guys, before we wrap up, some few more commands with the Linux. Free hyphen M is going to show you RAM size. Okay, how much total RAM is available, how much is used, and how much is free. Okay, there will be a cache also, and there will be a buffer also, and they'll be available also sometimes. Okay, so check it properly. DF-H command will show you the root partition name. Okay, you can see where it's mounted. How do you identify root partition? You simply see mounted on. If you see the root directory, that's a root partition. Okay, and this is the partition, hard disk partition name, SDA1. We learn about this partitioning and all. Uh, when, we, when I start cloud computing, there will be a lot of partitioning and all. That time I'll explain you much in detail this one, how to do partition, format, mount, all of it. So it's size is 40 gigs, use just three gigs, 35 gigs is still available. Okay, you can have other partitions also. So when your system is running slow or some problem, you can check few things, run W command, check the load average, check free hyphen M, check how much memory is free. Okay, also check your hard disk space. Sometimes this space root partition gets full and the system will be very slow. Okay, so these are like two, uh, like three quick pointers which can tell you uh, what's wrong with the system currently. Okay, at least these are the blood pressures of the system. Okay, blood pressures and pulses. So you can find with this one what's, you know, that they, if there is something wrong or not. If wrong, then we can troubleshoot more. Later we'll see that. Okay. Uh, what else we have for the basics? Yeah, if you uname command, uname hyphen A will tell you what architecture, oh sorry, what's the first of all, what's the kernel version, okay? And what's the architecture, x86-64 means 64-bit operating system, right? Uname hyphen R will simply show you the kernel name, okay? Date command will show you the current date and time all the time this command will use to identify what's the date and time based on that we name our files and all there are some options also that we'll see in date command in scripting uh, last command will show you uh, which is the user that is last logged in and when when was the system last rebooted it's good for keeping track who is logging in to the system okay Every individual should have their own username, their own username to log in. With that username, they log in. Okay, they give their own password. And even, even they are the admin system administrators. Okay, they should log in with a user. Then they can change to root user. Okay, we never disclose root password to anyone. All right, sometimes root part password is not even set. No one knows it's no one can log in with root password. You log in with your user, then with sudo you can switch to root user. Okay, and it's very important to keep track. Then we will know that who logged in that particular time. But if there is root and 10 people have root login password, then 10 people will log in. How will we identify who is who? All right. So it's very important for keeping track. But there are other ways also, trust me, to find out. But these are basics right so i think last was the last command for today 